It's time for the Move in the Chains podcast. Your home for high school football coverage in the Palmetto State. Every team, every game, every week. And now your host, Kevin Thomas and John Epps. Welcome in to Moving the Chains, brought to you by Founders Federal Credit Union. I'm Kevin Thomas alongside John Epps. Got Drell Hendricks back on the board tonight. And guys, we are back with another season of high school football. We're here tonight for our 1A, 2A, and skis of season previews. We'll be back later on this week with 3A, 4A, 5A. Tonight we'll talk about some of the lower classes there. But John, you know, it's been a, a quick offseason, it feels like. We've had a lot of changes, a lot of coaching changes you had a reclass, just lots going on here to kind of get us, get us back now to the regular season. Yeah, it's it's like uh, completely new new regions and, and really new teams and, and different classifications that, you know, we're going to talk about the top 10 poll that just came out, the media poll. You know, number one on that list is Abbeville. You, you don't – Abbeville is a two-way school in my book. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of – a lot of school, well, not a lot of schools, but there's a handful of schools that have changed classifications. And it's, uh, I think it's a big uh oh for some schools, and it's going to be a big uh oh for a lot of other schools to, to have some of these schools in their class now. If you guys are here for the first time, we really appreciate you. Check us out here on Facebook, Twitter, slash X, Instagram, YouTube, and more at Moving Chains, M O V I N C H A I N S, our website, movingchains.com, podcast on Apple, Spotify, Google, and more. Don't forget, we go live during the season on every Tuesday night about 7, 7.15 with the live preview show. Talk about that week's biggest games along with a statewide look at all the games we have going on. Um, a lot of really good stuff coming out. Like I said, a preview show later on this week, a week zero preview show next week, along with some more coaches, interviews, and whatnot. But, John, let's go ahead. Actually, before we do that, buy some buy some MTC merch. Yeah, get you, get you a hat. Get you a hat. Support the boys. Got some great Richardson hats, Richardson 112 stuff, really quality stuff. Got some hoodies as well for those cold weather games. A nice gray, a nice white, really high quality stuff. Um, I love wearing my hat and my hoodie feels great. Definitely check us out. You can see the the email address there. You can, you can reach out to us there or send us a DM here or on social media. And we'll definitely get you get back to you, get you hooked up with that stuff as well. But John, let's take a look starting off at the uh the one A ranks. Drill, as always, feel free to pop in comments as we go and we'll kind of break that out, break down that classification. Yeah, I'll start at the top since I kind of Spoiled who number one is. So getting all the votes, all the first place votes for number one is Abbeville. Second, Bamberg Earhart. Third is Louisville. Uh, new head coach for Louisville this year. Four, Johnsonville. Five, Lamar. Six, Blackville Hilda. Seven is Calhoun County. Lakeview is eight. Latta is nine. And Cross comes in at 10. It's hard not to have a 1A poll and have Abbeville number one. You know, based off of their success, they've had it 2A over the last, what, 50 years? I mean, it's, it's been – it's not a flash in the pan. They're always good. They've got quarterback DB Demarcus Leach, the South Carolina commit. He's back running the show there. Two running backs, Carson Norman, J. Lewis Haddon, really good players. Has played a lot of football there for Coach Nichols' squad. Abbeville is going to be a, a heck of a ball team. You know, didn't quite make the the deep run they wanted to last year. I believe they lost in the the upper state final. Is that correct, John? Yeah. yeah. Uh, but a definitely a good football team there. A team that I, I like a lot. I think it's going to make a lot of noise this season. Yeah, I think so, too. And, you know, one thing that you notice about these polls, too, there's no mention of Southside Christian, Christchurch, yeah. St. Joe's, um, you know, that, that Greenville region, really. Those guys are in higher classifications yep. now. So we'll get to that later. Um, Christchurch won the uh, the state championship this past year. They're not in 1A this year, so we're going to have a new champ no matter what in the 1A classification. 
Yeah, the next couple teams on that list, you know, Bamberg, Earhart, and Louisville, two teams that have had a lot of young talent the past couple of years, a lot of names you'll recognize, still there, still ready to make some noise. You know, Bamberg, Earhart, Coach Crosby, year, I believe, three there with him as the head coach. Uh, Chanston Crosby, a Georgia st- – uh, sorry, North Carolina Central commit now. He plays the quarterback spot, had 3,300 3, yards passing last year, 25 touchdowns. Marcus Ken is a good player for them as well. Louisville, you mentioned the new coach, Trent Usher, taking notes for Leon Bull, where he's been the D.C. the past two seasons. They have weapons galore. Guys like Tay Robinson, Ja Howes, Jordan Strong, Zach Rogers, Peanut Harris, defensively led by J.B. Buchanan, some of those guys there. They are loaded. The one thing they do have to figure out, John, new quarterback, uh, Ian Grissom, transferred over to Rock Hill. Got to fill that spot there, but lots of talent, as always, with that program. And Bamberg, we know what they are. Uh, them coming out of the lower state, they've got a really good chance to, to win that. And then, you know, it comes down to Louisville, Abbeville right now. It looks like they're in the upper state. Yeah, you know, and again, uh, oh, boy, it's hard to go against Abbeville. Um, how good how good they've been at 2A. Yeah. Now coming down to the 1A, 1A level. But, you know, you talk about Bamberg, Earhart, Johnsonville. They played for that uh, lower state championship last year. Uh, really, really two good programs. Johnsonville has really come alive. I'd say mm-hmm. the last two to three years, the flashes have been been really good. But, you know, I, I thought 1A was pretty impressive last year where we had, you know, cr- Big Cross. They had, you know, they had a great season last yeah. year. Lad had a great season last year. Lakeview, they seem to be right on the cusp. Um, you know, they're, I think they're going to be a really, really good group. You know, Callum Cowling's always good. Lamar, uh, you always got to count on Lamar being a good football team. I think 1A, Abbeville is way up here, mm-hmm. but I think 2 through 10 – uh, really, really close together. Yeah, a couple teams in the poll that that I think may be a hair too high, um, and it's a team that I've been super high on, that's Johnsonville. You know, you lose Malik Shippey, a four-year starter at quarterback. I know you've won back-to-back lower state titles, but that's a lot to replace there. You know, you, you lost your, your your go-to running back there. I believe Landon Martin is also gone. They do have a couple guys coming back. Uh, they've got a, a young quarterback, Larkin Powell, going to step in there. Three, three offensive line starters back. That's big for them as well. And then they've got uh, defensively, they will be led by – I can't find the name. I just lost it. Defense led by Lay, uh, Landon Cripp. 118 tackles last year, 19, 19 tackles for loss. Uh, Tyshawn Brown, also a good player at safety there. That Lamar squad, I'm very high on them. Coach Burris, year two, was a Ridgeview offensive coordinator previous to this. Had a really good squad last year. Had an injury in the playoffs for the quarterback that really hurt them. Zori Pierce, he's back. Zoom Jackson, great name there. He's back at receiver. He's a heck of an athlete for them. And they've got a lot of depth up front, too, which I like, led by Kendall Walton, offensive lineman that's gotten offers from a lot of really good schools there. They're going to have a, a great squad, it feels like there. I believe they have 16 starters coming back. And Lamar, we know they always have playmakers. They're a team to watch, I think, in 1A. Yeah, they're going to be really fun to watch. Um, but do you agree it's – is it Abbeville and everybody else, or I mean, someone I, else got a good chance? It, it feels like the Panthers – just they bring back a lot, and that we know they, they can win in the 2A level. I mean, you, you think they've got to be the favorite. I mean, they have to be. Uh, but there are some teams that I think uh, can make some noise. Another team I really like that is a little bit lower on the pole than I would like to see them, Blackfield Hilda. Jaquel Holman, South Carolina commit, really good football player. Namir Anderson on the defensive side, he's a great player as well there for Coach Jones' squad, a team that I believe they were the, the last public school left in the upper state last year, had a really nice run. They're going to be an outstanding football team, a tough out for anybody there. On the back end of that poll, John, cross, they're always tough. Big cross, you know, those you got those guys down there with uh, running back Carmelo Jones, linebackers Preston Fuller and David Wickfall. They've won 11 games in a row, two seasons, or 11 games in a year, two years in a row. Really impressive there for Coach Wright and what he's done with that program. Uh, Lakeview, I mean, how do you not talk about Lakeview on 1A? They're a prohibitive favorite, prohibitive you know, really, really good talent there. Quarterback Casey Herlong, running back Tyrell Foxworth, both three-year starters. Strong up front on defense. Have to replace a lot on that secondary. That worries you a little bit, John. Um, I do want to mention these teams that were in the, the other receiving votes, too. If you have any thoughts on those. We have HKT, Denmark, Olar, Branchville, Macby, Dixie, Green C. Floyds, Hannah Pamplico, Whitmire, and Great Falls. Any other teams that did, maybe didn't make the top ten that – that you like or you want to shout out here uh, as we kind of finish up this 1A ranking? Well, I was impressed with Denmark Olar last year. You know, they showed that they were a little bit up and down, mm-hmm. but they did show you – know, was it Bamberg that they beat early in the I year? Believe so. uh, I believe so. I believe so. They showed that they can be – when they've got it put together, they can beat – you know, if you beat Bamberg, you can beat anybody. Um, so, I, I 
Denmark Olar is one that's really on my radar. They weren't really on my radar, radar last year. This year, I'm going to be uh, keeping a little bit of a closer eye on them, see if they can, if you get a little more consistency and um, turn that corner a little bit better. Yeah, playmaker uh, Terrence Hinton there. New coach William Razor is replacing uh, Javaris Littlejohn, who went to Lugolf Ilgens as the DC. That's a, a big replacement there. Uh, I, I was watching back our, it's funny, I watched our preview show from last year for 1A, and the team I had as a sleeper last year, I think my, I might have a sleeper again this year. Oh, okay. And that's in the PD area, Hannah Pamplica. Uh, okay. Did not have a great year last year. Had a lot of injuries. Lost her top quarterback, running back, and receiver at one point. But they guys, those guys are coming back. Wade Poston, a quarterback, a three-year starter now. Jamarcus Williams, as a sophomore, John, ran for 2,000 yards. Last year was on pace for that. Got hurt. He's back. He's healthy. He's a really good player there. Seven starters on offense, six on defense back. I mentioned they went three and eight. But that's a kind of a, an outlier, kind of a misnomer there due to the injury. I think Coach Woodbury can make that group a a really uh, dangerous bunch this season. Um, any A couple of teams I do want to mention, Wagner Sally, new coach Blaze Gillespie, Zamian Capers is back, Isaiah Garner, Rayfield Bell, Kyrie Tyler. A lot of good playmakers there. Quarterback battle with Rayvon Chandler and Gavin Starnes happening right now. Like That's a good squad there. They could be a, a one to watch as well in the 1A ranks. And I'll, I'll throw out one more team that, hasn't been mentioned yet that I think is a team we sh you should definitely watch as well. Baptist Hill. Um, you know, they were, they were another team where I feel like they played everybody tough. Mm -hmm. um, you know, pretty good ball club. No mention of them in the, you know, receiving votes or anything like that. Um, but that's going to be, that, that's a team that's going to be a tough team. That same region as uh, Cross as well. Um, mm -hmm. That'll probably be, that could be for the region. Uh, yeah. That cross map this game. Yeah. A couple of teams I do want to mention here uh, for all our Atlanta Vikings fans, our, our friends there, I do want to mention them. Lost a ton from last year. New quarterback, new running back coming in. But Coach Eisman has done a fantastic job building that program up. You should see what they can do this year uh, with, with some new pieces going in there. Uh, they're going to be strong up front, which is always nice to have at the 1A level. we got to find goal playmakers there to step up. And then also, not a team that I think is going to be a state title contender this year, but a really neat story. Great Falls, new head coach, Savelle Newton. Yeah, um, yeah, that's really so cool. cool there. I don't know what to expect from them. You know, last year they, they had some attrition late in the year, had to cancel a couple games. Guys weren't wanting to play, whatnot. Really exciting hire for them with Coach Newton. That's a team I, I, I'm interested to see what they can do this year. Will they be a, a state title contender? I, I don't know. Probably not in year one, but I think he can make some noise and, and really make that program just, uh, you know, be somewhat of a, a competitive bunch this season. Yeah, you know, we talked about it before on the, on the coaching carousel that a, a huge thing about Louisville and how they've been so good lately is the depth. Yeah, you know, if you can if you can just rally some support and get some more guys out on that football field to uh, give you more bodies at that one A level is you know that's a real game changer to be able to do that. And, you know, not have everybody playing both ways for yeah. uh, you know forty eight minutes. Yeah, a another team that that I do have as a potential dark horse um, that's Carver's Bay. They're a team that's been really good uh, in in the past uh, in that one a one a ranks. You, know, you mentioned all the guys that have come through there, the, the gathers over the years. They've got another big time prospect, Zion Giles, the P five guy up on the offensive line, really good. Him and Bakari Bryce, really good up front. New quarterback though, Christian Simmons, running back Kennard Hayward ran for a thousand plus last year. They got some nice pieces there. Uh, a tough region though, they believe they're in that region with Johnsonville and those guys there. So not going to be an easy one to get out of, but I think they've got some pieces to make a to make a nice run there. Jarrell, any comments that, you know, I was kind of going through a lot of people there. Any comments I need to, to mention from the chat or, you know, anything that you want to throw in as well on the 1A ranks? Pey Peyton says, where Shoals be a lot better than many expect. Interesting to hit, you know, where Shoals, I think this is uh, year two under the new coach there who came, who came over to those guys. They had a, a, a couple decent uh, games last year. Weren't really what people thought they were going to be. I've heard some good things about them. I'm excited to see what those guys can do this season. Louisville, Lamar, same region. Yeah, that was that was surprising yeah, to me. You know, Lamar has been one day during that's been upper state, lower state, back and forth a lot over the years. Those guys playing the lines will be a super fun ball game this year. Says you guys got your quarterback. I'm looking forward to that. I know we talked to Coach Usher. So Usher said so a couple guys that are working out there. Interested to see where they go and, and how that turns out there for the Lions. Uh, you guys got it well covered, man. You guys uh, did your research this all season, so it's a lot of fun. I just got a couple points with one A man looking at the poll number one. The cool thing about it is. You have 10, you know, 10 teams, obviously, in this poll. 
but then you have 11 teams receiving votes, you know, so that just shows how competitive it is. You know, like once you, you kind of separate, I think Abbeville, of course, is, is the clear favorite there. Uh, but once you, you, you look at there, you know, you have 20 teams, you know, vying for the top 10 where, you know, voters around the state think that they have a competitive shot. And that yeah. leads into my second point here. John touched on it early. I mean, you don't see Christ Church. You don't see St. Joe's. You don't see the private schools. What an opportunity for these guys, you know, to make it a deeper run. You know, obviously with the private schools, you know, they have kind of dominated here. They move up to, to 3A and, and things like that. But I'm really excited for these, you know, these 1A schools to have an opportunity, to, you know, to make some deep runs in the playoffs. And, uh, you know, at, I, I, I want to point out too, you like you don't really have an excuse. I mean, you do have Abbeville coming back, but now like, hey, you 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 can't use that anymore. So if you if you want to go get it, you have to go after it, and uh, it's going to be a great opportunity. Excited to see one A football this year. For sure. Um, a couple of teams I didn't mention, but obviously, you know, we can hold that for next week's preview show, of course. But uh, any other comments in the chat, Drill? We need to mention here on, on the one A ranks. I know we've got a couple couple fans popping in here, so I'm going to give them a shout out real quick. If you can feel free to pop them up there. Yeah, I got a couple comments, you know, first show of the year. So, just Chevron, so. good to see you, man. We'll have uh, Gray talking about, talk about them in the 4A ranks here on our next preview show. And of course, we got we got Brad Bradley. Bradley, appreciate Bradley. you, man, as always. Looking forward to those Indians again. They'll be really good uh, in the 5A ranks as well. But that's all we have for 1A. If you guys have some final thoughts here, we can move on to you know, pay so some do bills. You guys, do you all want to go ahead and make some predictions like now or circle back at the end of the show and do, and do everything at the end? Let's do it right now. Okay, who wants to go first? Ooh. <laughs> you said you were ready, John. You said you were ready. <laughs> oh, I said let's do it now. Not necessarily ready. <laughs> okay. Um, I'll go then if you want me to. I, I think in the upper state, like, I love this Louisville team. I, I really do. But it's hard to pick. I, I really love Louisville and Blackfield Hilda in the upper state. I think those are both really good football teams. But I think it has to be Abbeville as, as your favorite right now. And, until we see something different on the field, I think they've got to be the prohibitive favorite. Um, lower state. That's where it gets a little tough for me. Um, I think lower state, I think, is Bamberg's to lose at this point. Um, I, I'm, I'm going Abbeville, Bamberg, Earhart right now in the 1A uh, final. Oof. Yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. But I, I'm going to pivot a little bit and say I think Lamar gets to the upper state championship game against Abbeville. Okay. I, I think Lamar is going to really break through this yeah. year. Um, I think that and that could be, you know, and depending on where that game is, you know, that game's at Lamar. Yeah, I mean that's and, and that's another thing. Abbeville is so good, but there's some of these schools that are really, really good as well. You get them at your home field, um, you know, who knows what can happen. Yeah, yeah. Drew, who do you got in this in this one A rank? Oh man, put me on the spot, man. It's hey, so you gotta do it. You gotta do it. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, with Abbeville, you, you you gotta love what they bring to the table. Uh, but I think I feel like the upper state is kind of stacked when it comes to, you know, top level teams. You, you mentioned like Blackfield, Hilda, Lamar, you know, how that flips, you know, I, I don't like how sometimes that goes. Um, I really like Lamar, really like Blackfield, Hilda, obviously really like Abbeville, but I think you have to stick with Bamberg. You know, it, it sucks to kind of go with the the trend there, uh, but I think Bamberg and, you know, um, I think Cross, man, they always have athletes. They always seem to figure it out. Like you, you mentioned earlier, two consecutive 11 win seasons in a row man they're poised for a breakthrough i like the cross team as well yeah you know that lower state has been run by johnson for the last couple of years i mean they've had some close close games against these guys like bamberg and you know uh lamar and whatnot but they keep winning yeah Dejan, you're right Denmark, yeah, yeah. a lot of a lot of athletes down there i know they had i think they had some players some injury injuries or players leave last year something like that they really hurt them but they're a good squad yeah louisville abbeville certainly could be the upper state title game would not surprise me um one bit Audrey, let's give a, a quick shout out to some of our friends of the program. They will look at the, the 2A ranks. Facing unexpected expenses and need a quick play? A personal loan from Founders Federal Credit Union can help you cover costs and get back in the game. With competitive rates and flexible terms, a personal loan from Founders is the winning play. Whether it's for a big purchase or an emergency, we've got you covered. Visit foundersfcu.com slash personal to get started. Terms and conditions apply. Membership qualification required. The George Agency has been serving the insurance needs of South Carolina for over 40 years. They're a full-line insurance agency concentrated in employee benefits and health insurance with an office in Mullins and Merle's Inlet, but they can help you all across the state. They have clients in Greer, Rock Hill, Columbia, and more, so wherever you are, they can help. 
Give Bradley, Wayne, Richard, and the crew a call or check them out online at thegeorgeagency.net. That's thegeorgeagency.net. Okay, let's take a look down at the 2A ranks now. And, guys, if you're just tuning in, you missed 1A, you can always go back and watch it. It stays on Facebook and YouTube. It'll be on our podcast as well later on. So, obviously, you can go back and watch it if you did miss 1A. But let's take a look down at the 2A classification. Now, John, look at that poll that just came out today. Yeah, a lot of new names in this one as well. Number 10, Andrew Jackson. Number 9, Manning. 8 is Saluda. 7 is Philip Simmons. 6, Fairfield Central. Five, Barnwell. Four is Strom Thurmond. Three and getting one first place vote is Hampton County. Second and getting seven of the first place votes is Clinton. And number one, the Cheshire Cyclones getting nine of those first place votes. This poll, um, as we said earlier, not our poll, the prep writers poll, the media poll, um, may not agree with it sometimes, like in 2A here. I don't know how accurate it is but hey we do our own poll it'll come out later on usually week three or week four once you've seen these teams play a little bit um i love chester and i love clinton i mean i feel like that's kind of almost too you got to put up there because they're coming down and they've, they're historically really good programs chester led by quarterback trooper floyd I think it's his third or fourth year starting now head coach's son moves well has, has really grown into uh, being a, a better athlete and growing to his body last year, he's a really good player there. They've got a new running back back that looks really good as well there for the Cyclones, but they did lose some key pieces on, on defense at line, linebacking court especially, but they're going to be good. Clinton, a team that has been a, a perennial contender the last few years under Corey Fallon. They do a great job there. The quarterback, Tyshawn Richardson, is back. He can throw it and run it. Really good athlete there. Brett Young leads him on defense, the linebacker spot. He's done a fantastic job there as well, including uh, – sorry, they have a, a bunch of charge back on offense, including the entire offensive line. And with that offense that he runs, kind of a Jamie Chadwell-ish kind of offense out of the pistol, shotgun, some option stuff. Huge to have that back. Uh, they're going to be a contender for sure, and I think they certainly should be in the top two in that poll. Yeah, I am really – I think – I like this poll a lot. I think this one's really good. I, I, you look at everybody in this, in this top team, you go, ooh, they're pretty good. Ooh, they're pretty good. Yeah, I, I think – um, Andrew, I don't know if Andrew Jackson's got it. I don't know if they're rounded out enough to be, um, like a top five team, but they mm -hmm. are very good. But Manning, we've seen has been getting better. Saluda, we know, is always very good. Philip Simmons is, uh, they have become a great program very quickly now as well. I agree. I think this is set up pretty well. Um, but yeah, it's hard to, it's hard to go against two, two bigger programs that are coming down. Um, in Chester and Clinton in uh here in 2A. That's and that's what's kind of scary for the rest of 2A, but you look at everybody else. I mean it, it's I think it's going to be incredibly competitive. There's some really really good teams. Hampton County's really good. I think Strom Thurmond's going to be really good again too. I know they've lost some good mm -hmm. some big pieces, but um you know that's a program. That wasn't a you have good teams and you have good programs. They are a good program. I do worry a little bit about the third and fourth team there in Hampton County and Strong Thurman. Thurman. Like I mentioned, losing a lot. Hampton County quarterback Chris Terry is back, but you have to replace a ton of production from Zion Dobson. He was a you know a Mr. Football Finals last year, I believe it was, had a huge year there for the Hurricanes in year one of that program combining. A lot to replace there. I, think, I do think they will be good under Coach Hanna there. Strom Thurman, we know they've got athletes, we know they've got talent, just – who is going to step up? You know, you mentioned you lose a guy like uh, like Braylon Staley and Tolan, and you lose your quarterback, you lose all these guys. Lots of production to, to come back, come uh, come up with. I do like Josh Merriweather, really good defensive lineman there. A playmaker Deontay Phillips, Sewell out wide as well. Shahid Williams, the watcher DB, I like as well. They've got some talented pieces. Just need to see them step up and you know do it more than they did last year for those guys. But they will certainly uh, be there. A team I am high on that fifth spot. I love this Barnwell squad. Head coach Brian Smith, year two there. Lots of returning pieces. Cam Austin at quarterback. A South Carolina baseball commit. Really good player there. Jaquan Peoples, Logan Sturkey, you're really good playmakers out wide for them. They've got a lot of talent there. Um, Edie and Thomas and Zizit, Zizit at the linebacker core can really get done on that side of the ball. I think they're in for a deep run. I mean, they just brought back Dwayne Garrick as a, as a coach now. Since he retired from Aiken, he comes back over to the barn where he was previously. Interesting hire there for those guys, but I think he's going to bring a lot of juice to a Barnwell team that, you know, knocked off a Marion team in the playoffs last year. Last year people, people didn't see that coming. Yeah. They had a good squad last year. I think they got a lot of those pieces back. I think the Warhorses can make a deep run. Yeah, I think Barnwell is very – they're another team right in the mix of it all here. Um, you know, they got ousted by Oceanside in the playoffs last year, but uh, incredibly good team 
Um, Barnwell is going to be right up there too. I, I am, when you go to that next spot, six at Fairfield Central, I'm a little bit worried about the Griffins because yep. they lose their quarterback, I yep. believe, right? Yeah, um, transfer it out to South Point. Yep, yep. Um, and he was a really, really good player for Fairfield, Fairfield Central. Um, Cam, I, his last Cam name McMillan. Was Cam, Cam McMillan. Cam McMillan, yeah. Yep. Um, got to talk to his mom and dad again. Great, or uh, his dad, rather. Um, great guy. Uh, it's going to be tough to lose him. He's a really good player, really good athlete. But they've got – he wasn't the only athlete on that mm -hmm. squad. Um, they, they got some really good players, but he was really the glue. So it'll be interesting to see um, how that team looks with a new quarterback, um, you know, and having stepped in some pretty big shoes uh, for McMillan as well. So I'm a little bit worried about Fairfield, Fairfield Central. But, you know, again, you, you, you guys, you're saying the same thing about Hampton County. You're saying the same thing about Strom Thurman, you know, that – a lot of these teams are they're good programs, but they are replacing some big pieces. They do have uh, Tadarian Greer back, really good playmaker out wide, along with Jaden Boyd, a, a really good speedster for them. So they've got those pieces back, but lots to replace, like you mentioned. Another team, a lot to replace, Philip Simmons. Uh, lose, I think, both their running backs from last year graduated. Do have quarterback Tavian Oriana back? He'll be asked to do a lot more than he had to do last year. Probably got to throw a little bit more than what he did, um, but he, he's been a, a multi year starter now, so he'll have some experience there. Colton Kellerman, Cooper Webb out wide. They're a team coming down from 3A. Yeah, Allison, you're right. Lost a lot of pieces there. Um, you know, this Phillips Simmons team is interesting to me because they're a team that was a com competitor in 3A the last couple of years. I thought, if anything, they, they might move up. Uh, surprised to see them come down to 2A. Um, they could certainly make some noise there. Interesting to see how that shakes out for them. Saluda, you worry a little bit about, uh, about their depth as well. You know, JT Lott's a big-time player. Coach Young is actually replacing both coordinators. See how that shakes out early in the year. Uh, you know, I take a little bit to, to get used to those guys there, but the Tigers always have a have a solid squad. Manning led by Jeray Mitchell there at the ninth spot. He can make some plays for them. Andrew Jackson at ten, uh, a team that I do worry about. You know, you lose Trey Thompson. Uh, Cam McGill is a good player on the defensive side of the ball, but what can Coach Jeremy Smith in year two cook up now that you lose your you're all everything back? A guy you've relied on for you yeah. know two plus years running the running the rock for probably what 3,000, 4,000 career yards. A lot of production to replace there for the volunteers. Yeah, you know, and, and I got to go to that Andrew Jackson Fairfield Central game last year, and, and you know, the offense revolved around Thompson. Uh, you know, they they looked like they could throw the ball downfield, and I don't know, maybe they just had a bad game. They, they weren't quite clicking um, downfield passing game. Yeah. You're going to have to do a little bit more of that this year without Thompson. Um, I don't know who they've got coming in behind them, but – that guy was a hammer. Uh, yeah. You know, to replace him 100% is uh, pretty unlikely. But again, this is a, this is an AJ program. Last few years has been really strong. You know, what was it? Maybe two or three years ago, um, they demanded us yeah. to talk about them because yeah. they were that good. They were playing that good of football. Um, so, yeah, they're another one. They've got a really big piece to, to fill. Um, but yeah, I think. Andrew Jackson and Saluda, I am a little bit worried about. Um, and a lot of that is depth and just having because we look at this, you look at Chester, you look at the other end of the top 10, you look at how much they've got coming back, uh, how much experience they have, depth that they have, and playing at a higher level, uh, you know, last year as well in 3A. That it's hard to go, mm, um, you know, they're gonna be even. You think Chester and Clinton are gonna have a real heads up toward the teams that are on the backside of this top 10. Yeah, you know, I mentioned earlier that I wasn't the biggest fan of this poll. I think it's because some of these teams in the receiving votes, I am very high on. Um, other teams receiving votes, we had Sherall, 96, Timberland, Baseburg, Leesville, Marion, Whale Branch, Atlantic Charter, Chesney, and Andrews. Sherall and Andrews. Uh, we actually talked about these coaches recently with some previews there. Sherall, I think, is a legit top five team in 2A right now, if not higher. Um, had 17 all-region guys last year, John. All of them are back. Every single one. Uh, you know, Nick Gordon, um, Justin Joint, just studs all over the field there for them. Uh, Poole, Crawford Poole, their linebacker as well. Studs everywhere. Coach Poole does a great job there. They're going to be a very interesting team. They play a tough out-of-region uh, schedule. They've got two 5A teams, I believe. Um, Conway, River Bluff. He wants to see how good they can be because he knows they have the talent there. I think Shraw is a team that can make a lot of noise in 2A this year. And Andrews, that offense they run, you don't see a lot of option anymore. Um, and, and Coach Durham is one of the best at that. They are kind of transitioning more from the under center option to more of that Jamie Chadwell style now out of the pistol shotgun. But uh, Brandon Cumbie is back. He's, a, I believe, a two- or three, three-year All-State player. Great to have him back. He'll be a great player for them along with running back A.J. Lee. 96 last year, I think, went 
nine and one regular season, John, uh, under Coach Bennett in his first year. Did lose some pieces. Do have Zay King back at running back. That offense they run as well. Very run heavy under Coach Bennett. Um, definitely want to keep it on the ground. They can make some noise, I think. Baseburg Leesville is a team that I've heard a lot of talk about this offseason. People have been very high on them. Um, I'm not, you know, I haven't seen them myself, so I can't say, but I've heard very good things about uh, the Panthers. Yeah, Chris, receiving votes for sure. The Panthers are a team to, to watch out for, I think, in the 2A ranks. Yeah, well, what about Baseburg Leesville is do they have, have they been able to gel yet as a staff? Um, you know, there's a lot of, um, a lot of moving parts uh, with the Batesburg Leesville program this all season, but um, yeah, they can put things together. You know, they're an exciting team to watch as well. Uh, you know, there's there's a lot of players here. Um, you know, and I think you mentioned them, Sherall. Mm -hmm. Where Sherall is, I think what is cool about them. Two years ago, uh, one of my dad's friends works. You know, he's in Sherall. He he goes there every game. He goes. And we're gonna be good in about a year or two. Yeah, <laughs> they, yeah. Like they know they've got the guys. It's yeah. just a matter of getting those guys some experience, getting them. Um, you know, it's hard to rely on a ninth grader and tenth graders to you know win a ton of games for you. But once you once you get a little bit older, you get a little bit bigger. You or, you know grow into your body a little bit more. Um, for these high schoolers, so uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see Sherall. I think they are going to. They're probably gonna surprise a lot of people, or at least a lot of people in the media. Yeah, uh, I sure. agree. I agree. Uh, Chesney is, is an interesting squad to me. New coach Brett Chappell went out from North Carolina. Brings a winning tradition there. I think he'll be good. Blacksburg, last year, John, they were putting up crazy offensive numbers. I think they get 14 starters back, including quarterback Josh Sims, receivers Cam Cobb, running back Dom Odom are all back. They put up a lot of points. They commissioned team to follow this season. Um, along with Chesterfield, Coach Matt Quinn coming in, uh, former North Augusta head coach, former Westwood head coach, really sharp guy on both sides of the ball. They've got Quay Clark at receiver, one of the better players in the area there. They can make some noise in that region, too. I think, you know, with them, them, Sherrall, um, Andrew Jackson, they have a real chance to win a lot of ball games there. I think it'd be a, it'd be a solid team in the 2A ranks. Um, any other teams I want to shout out and mention these guys? Marion, Marion and Mullins, both those guys, the tobacco bowl there. Marion lost so much talent last year. I think they've got six or seven guys from last year's squad that are now playing collegiate football at one, at one level or another, which is – Really insane to hear for a 2A program. Incredible. Um, a lot of new pieces coming in. See how they, they do. Mullins went winless last season under Coach Mark Lowry, Mark Lowry. But I think, you know, and it's weird to say this, I think the fact that Xavier Leggett, the, the success he saw at South Carolina last year, may have helped that program. Like kids can say, hey, this guy's from Mullins, worked hard, went to an SEC school, now he's a first-round draft pick. I think that has really helped the program get some more kids to buy in. I don't know if they're going to be state title contenders this year, but I do think they win a couple games. I think they win a game in week. I think they win their first game of the season. Uh, I believe in their first ball game. They've got a team that I think they will beat. I think that's Scott's branch. I like them, uh, the Hawks in that matchup. But interesting to see what he can do there and if he can get that program heading the right direction, um, you know, from where it's been the last couple of years. Patrick's big XL. Yeah, I mean, the best, uh, the best commentary of anybody. I mean, in the NFL right now, I, I just put that guy on repeat. Let me let him talk to me. I mean, he's, he's got a great voice, great character, man. Uh, Xavier is the man for sure. Yeah, you you can tell he's having fun. That makes yeah. it even even better for the Mullins program because you know, you can look at him and go, man, he's one of us. You yeah, know? Um, he's not. I don't know. Yeah, I think that's. I agree with you one hundred percent. That gives uh, gives a lot of guys some excitement and go, hey, man, I I could do that too. Yeah. Um, and it was cool to see. I think uh, Xavier Leggett was – wasn't he doing some workouts or doing something with the, Yeah, yeah. I know he was working I, out at, at the high school, right? Yep, Early yep. in the summer. So, it's really cool to see him coming back, too. For sure. Uh, two more teams. I do want to hit on these two right quick. Um, Whale Branch. I know you've been howling in the last couple of years. They're going up like to 2A. Interesting to follow there. Timberland, one of the better prospects in the in the state. I believe he's next year, 2026 guy. Offensive lineman Desmond Green. A lot of offers already. And then a new player – in the 2A ranks, Atlantic Collegiate, uh, a charter school out of Horry County. Don't know what to expect. This is their first year of varsity football. Um, I saw they got a, a you know receiving votes there. Have not heard a lot about them under Coach Ribbons, who comes from that uh, from the Oceanside tree. But they will be a uh, interesting team to follow in the next couple of years for sure. Yeah, and if they are, and we've seen new schools come on the scene and be pretty good. So there's, I'm not going to jump to any conclusions and think they're going to, you know, not have it together just because it's year one. That's a tough region. That's yeah. uh, that's region seven. You've got uh, Manning and Marion both in that region as well. Um, 
King Street also in that region mm -hmm. too. So that's, yes. That's, yeah. Coach Smith does a great region. job there. Tough region. Uh, Drill, any comments from the chat before we do our title predictions here in 2A? Um, let's see. We got a, a jamboree question. You guys want any jamborees? Possibly. Uh, so there's a chance I may go to the one in Dillon. Uh, if I'm out of town this weekend, I may go, to, may go down to Dillon. Um, if not, may head over to, I believe it is Chapman, is the one I was looking at possibly. So we'll see what shakes out uh, this weekend, but that's what I'm possibly going to on Friday night. Yeah, everybody back, Zach, you're right, for Clinton up front. That's really, really good to see. Uh, running back core, you know, replaced a couple guys there. But the one thing about Clinton, they've always had athletes who can run the football, especially the last couple of years. I'm sure they will find somebody who will, will take a, a bulk of those carries and have a big season for those guys. I think the big thing for the Red Devils is can they stay healthy? If, they, if they're healthy, heck, you know, <laughs> sky's the limit. Yeah. But, you know, they – gosh, they were – they were as unlucky as anybody last year with having to deal with injuries. So mm -hmm. hopefully luck will be on their side this year and um, those kids won't have to, won't have to do that. And everybody will get to play. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you know, you want to sit on the, sit on the sidelines with a boot on your leg. Yeah. Anything else? Go ahead. No, that's, that's it for the comments. No, I just wanted to, to add a couple things here. I think, Looking at the poll specifically, you know, Chester and Clinton, obviously, I think they're going to be mainstays at the top, you know, for the, the duration of the season. Uh, but I think it's going to be pretty fluid. I, like you said, Kevin, I like a lot of these teams that are receiving votes. Like, you yeah, mentioned. right. <laughs> like, I think I like them better than, you know, some, some of the teams that are actually in the poll. The back half of that top 10 for sure, right? <laughs> yeah. When you look at Shira, 96, Timberland, Batesburg, Leesville, Chesney, you know, Will Branch, Andrew specifically, I like them. I think you're going to see some some teams sliding backwards. You know, Thurman's got athletes, but, you know, replacing so much. Even a Philip Simmons, they're replacing two 1,000-yard running backs and a D1, you know, DB and Troy Stevenson there. Haven't really heard much this offseason about Manning. You know, what is Saluda going to bring to the table? AJ, not only do they lose their best player, but also – I think that region is going to be way more competitive with the, the coaching additions and, and things like that. So, you know, not just the loss of talent, but, you know, what they're going to have to deal with there. So I think it's going to be very fluid, especially once we get into the first few weeks of region play with this 2A poll. It may completely flip from what we see here preseason. Oh, yeah. And I do want to mention this. I'm glad you brought up that region. We mentioned that region, I think, twice now. It's region four and 2A. That's the region with Andrew Jackson, Buford, Central, Sherrall, Chesterfield, North Central. That region, we believe, is going to be the hybrid one this year, uh, where hat, or, you know the one and the three probably go to one side of the bracket and two and the four go to the other side. But we don't know which one yet. And I think that's a that's a big, big, big uh, question that's got to be answered. If you, if you look at the upper state in 2A, similar to 1A, I think the upper state in 2A has a lot of heavy hitters. You mentioned Clinton. We mentioned Chester. Uh, you know, 96, Strom Thurman, Saluda, Batesburg, if, they, if they've got what we think they might have. So upper state is really, really loaded. Lower state, you know, you like Barnwell, you like Hampton County, you like Andrews, Philip Simmons. I think the upper state is a little heavier. You know, and I got more favorites up there. So I think if you're in Region 4, you'd probably prefer to go to that lower state. Uh, if I don't know if it's going to be the one and the three or the two and the four where it is. I don't know. But that will be an interesting shakeup here once the playoff brackets do come out uh, here in a few weeks. All right, guys, it's that time. So uh, here we go. <sighs> that so that. That yeah, Zach. That's the question. Um, I like. I think Clinton out of the upper state. I think they're the favorite there with Coach Fountain. Um, I know they've made some deep runs in the playoffs. Haven't quite gotten to that state title game yet. I think this year they do it. Oh, now who they play gets really really tricky here. Um, my favorite out of the regions five, six, and seven is Barnwell. I like the Warhorses a lot. Now the question comes in: Is that region four? <laughs> uh, if Sherall gets sent to the lower state, I think Sherall Barnwell, those are the two. Um, but I, I just don't know how that region is going to shake up. And the high school league, of course, has not put that out yet. So I don't know. Um, but I'm going to go right now just because, just because region four, I'm sorry, I'm taking you guys out of this. I don't know where you're going. I'm not going to pick region four. We're going to go Barnwell, Clinton, state title game. Ooh. I, I reserve the right to change that once we find out the region four. <laughs> I'm gonna go. I, I'm gonna. I'm not gonna be surprised if that game happens. I'm gonna, just for fun. I'm gonna go a little bit different. I'm gonna say Chester coming out of the upper state, going against Hampton County. Okay. Yeah, Hampton County, year two of the program. I believe they went to the lower state final last year for losing to Oceanside. Yeah. Really good season. Um, mentioned the quarterbacks back. 
you do worry about replacing Zion Dobson. Um, he he had a, a huge season in North Carolina Central kid now, a really good player there. Drill, who do you like in the two A ranks? Let me go. Let me go Chester since I picked Clinton last year. That's strictly the reason why I'm going with okay. Chester okay. here. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to be, I don't want Zach to beat me up in a parking lot or something like that uh, for picking Clinton twice in a row and them not winning. Um, so I'm going Chester there and uh, they're going to play. Ooh, go Barmel. Let's go with Barmel. I got it. I, got, I mean, Let's I, do it. I like, yeah, I, I just wish, I wish we knew the brackets. I wish we knew how it was going to shake out. I think that, that would possibly affect a lot of things there. Um, so, I think, well, let me throw this at you then. If, and I think I know where you're going. Oh God! <laughs> if Sherall gets thrown to the lower state, would you pick Sherall? Quite possibly. I mean, I, I, I think it would be Sherall and Barnwell. I okay. think would be would be the lower state matchup um, that I would like to see. And I, I don't know who I'd pick right now, but uh, I think, yeah, I think actually, I think probably the winner of that region four, whether it's Sherall or Andrew Jackson or Chesterfield or whoever, they will probably be. In my opinion, probably the second, maybe third favorite at that lower state. If I had to, if I had to guess, I think if it's Sherall, if Sherall has that kind of year, yes, I, I would reserve judgment on if it was AJ or somebody else. Uh, but that's just, that's me for sure. Drill. Uh, any other? Uh, Jason says Manning is young. We're going to be the running team entering their plays. Yeah, John Mitchell, Jeray Mitchell, there does a great job of quarterback running that offense there. Uh, Curtis says Sherall probably wins that region. Yeah, I, I agree with you there as well. Um, I, I think AJ just lost a lot. Chesterfield, you're Warner to Matt Quinn. I don't know if they've quite got the playmakers they need yet to make a move there. I think Sherall is a favorite in region four. Bradley says still some confusion about the multiplier rule. Did it did or did it not affect all schools? Some are saying only affected charge. No, it affected every school. Yeah, every school got the three time multiplier. If you had a kid out of your zone who comes to your school, they got counted as three instead of one. So it, it did affect every school. Some schools were, you know, 5A and they just couldn't go any higher. So I mean, you could say it technically didn't affect them, I guess, but it, it did. They were all thrown into the pot. It all counted. Um, that's how they broke out everything. So it did affect everyone, correct? And then Zach's pulling our 50 yard line tickets down there at Wilder Stadium when we want to go because um, I didn't pick Clinton, you know, so it's my fault. I was literally trying to do them a solid and not pick them again. You uh, might not be like, welcome there, Drill. Yeah. Honestly, if you just picked I, you know, I was I was honestly trying to do him a solid. I was trying to pick against him, you know, reverse jinx it and, and trying to help him out. So I see how it is. Yeah, your heart's in the right place. You're <laughs> you're you're a big picture guy. This, you know. Love it. Love it. Well, let's Drill, go, let's, go ahead. Let's, yeah, let's play, let's pay some bills, guys. Yeah, shout out to our program uh sponsors here, and then we'll talk into the uh the skeezer ranks, John. Yeah. Put founders in the game and win big with our great rates. Whether you're looking for a loan or want to grow your money with a certificate, Founders Federal Credit Union can help you move the chains on your financial goals. Not a member? No problem. Visit foundersfcu.com to see if you qualify. Federally insured by NCUA. Membership qualification required. Equal housing lender. Terms and conditions apply. John, let's look down at the Skeezer ranks now. Um, we don't have a, a state prep media poll for that. So we're going to use another publication. Um, we said earlier we don't agree with some of these polls. These guys, we – you know what, John, just read it. Don't say who it's from. Just read them out, and then we'll just go that, use that as talking points. Let's start with 4A here in Skeezer and, and work our way down the Skeezer ranks. They, they've at least been brave enough to put out a poll more than what I can say. Hmm. Starting with 4A, we'll go top to bottom. So they do top five. Uh, number one, you've got Hammond. Two, Lawrence Manning. Three, Porter God. Porter Goud, sorry. Four, Northwood Academy. And five is Cardinal Newman. Four A and Skiza, I mean, has been Hammond's to lose, and that is still the case. They're, they're seven times state champs in a row. I mean, I mean, what are you doing against you know Coach Wheeler's squad? They had to be number one. Uh, quarterback Andrew Turner, running back Manny Johnson, watching Eric Croft there. Tight end Mike Tyler's a D one guy. I believe he is uh, committing next week to either Duke or West Virginia. No, uh, Duke, LSU, West Virginia. Really good offers there from Mike Tyler. He's a great player uh, there. They've got some good defensive guys, uh, linebackers, Brewer, Lamont, and Drew McCall. They'll kind of anchor that side. They did lose a lot up front, 
but I still think they're probably the favorite. We'll find out a lot about those guys here in week zero. They play host to Christ Church um, out of the upper state, a 4A school now in the high school league. Going down to take on the Skyhawks will be a fun ball game there. Who's the number two team you have there, John? Lawrence Manning. Lawrence Manning, you know, uh, the team that, that played uh, Hammond last year for the state title. New head coach who's actually an old head coach. Robbie Briggs, coming back to that program. Guy who took the two state titles while he was there at the Swamp Cats. Also had a long career, successful career at Manning before that. Will first heading down to Robert E. Lee. Lawrence Manning, they've got athletes they always do. I know there was uh, some shakeup. We mentioned the new coach there. Some stuff went on behind the scenes. I, I don't know all the, the stories to that. But Lawrence Manning, I think, will be a contender again. Um, I do think they are probably the second best team in 4A. A couple teams I want to mention. I mentioned Porter Gow, J.J. Flood, really good running back, one of the better running backs in the state. He's a stud for them. Uh, Cardinal Newman, Corey Helms has done a good job there. They've had a lot of moving pieces, guys coming in, guys coming out. Hard to know what they're going to have right now, but they've been a, a, a really building program uh, the last couple years, it feels like. Yeah, and they were – so they got knocked out by Hammond in the playoffs, and they were very competitive. That was mm-hmm. a two-score game. Um, and Cardinal Newman is certainly not short on talent. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a couple more. Ben Lippin, year uh, two for Coach uh, Bennett Weigel. Actually, year three, excuse me, for Bennett Weigel there. A program that's really grown. They do have to replace quarterback Javon Gilmore now at Gaffney. He's a big loss for them. They do have Jameer Crooks, Jamari Carmichael back as the playmakers there for them. Linebackers Drake Porter, Jordan Connors also back. A team I do want to mention, Heathwood Hall. New head coach, Timer Zimmerman, a former Marlboro County standout, a former Newberry College standout, Arena League legend really can get it done on the field, and now he can get it done on the sidelines as well. They were a team that went 2-9 and nine last year, John, but they were just ravaged by injuries. A lot of guys are back. Patrick Belt at quarterback's a really good player. He's probably a D1 guy for them. Power 5, top 10 prospect in the state. Onus Conan Banny, a defensive back. I got it right on the first try. You're going to love that. That's Conan really Banny, good. Conan Banny, Onus Conan Banny, really good player. He's going to be a Power 5 guy here. He can make some plays all over the field for them. I think Coach Zerman makes that Heathwood Hall team have a quick turnaround. I think they can make a lot of noise here in 4A in the skeezer ranks. Yeah, I mean, in, you know, in Heathwood Hall, that is just from what I know, the little bit that I've seen of Heathwood Hall, I mean, that's a that's a very desirable place to, to be. And, uh, you know, it. I feel like you can get the talent there that you need to be very, very competitive. And having, uh, having Coach Zerman there, that's going to be – more fuel on the fire for those guys. I think they are. If they're not there this year, they'll be there very close. Yeah, the last team I do want to mention is Northwood Academy going up to 4A, year two for Coach Johnny Waters there. They've already got a big win on the season. They beat Buford uh, like last Saturday, I believe, in week negative two, whatever you want to call it. I don't know. But they're 1-0 in the year. Uh, Garrett Cash is offensive lineman. That's a really good player for them. They are trending in the right direction, but I don't, I don't know if they've quite got enough talent and depth yet to make a deep run in 4A. John, let's look at the 3A ranks. Maybe we do all of skis, and then we'll circle back into the state title predictions after we do all of these. Sure. But let's look at the 3A class now in the skis ranks. So number one is Hilton Head Christian. Number two, Wilson Hall, followed by Pinewood Prep at three, Florence Christian at four, and then Trinity Collegiate at the fifth spot. Three is an interesting one to me. You know, Hilton Head Christian, state champs last year, three in the last four seasons. New quarterback, Reed McCollum, coming over. Defensive players, Harper Mitchell, Hamilton Butler, will read, lead that squad. They do a great job. They're, they are perennial contenders, it feels like, there at the 3A ranks. Trinity Collegiate is an interesting one to me. They've been playing 4A football in Skiza for, uh, for quite a while now. They dropped down to 3A, more, more fitting for the size of school they are, really. I think they will be a big-time contender. James Herbert, tight end, defensive end. Young quarterback K to Mel offensively uh, that line should be a strength of that program. I think the Titans could be a, a big time contender there in 3A. Now, let me ask you this. What's uh Wilson Hall? Play for the state championship last they year. They did. They did. They Where, did. Head coach Adam uh, Jarecki. Jarecki does a great job there. Um that option offense still is it's tough to prepare for. You don't see it a lot. They did lose some key pieces. I don't know if they're quite as good as last year's team. Um, I think if you couple that with the fact of a Trinity Collegiate coming down, a couple other guys moving into the 3A ranks there, I think they're probably not one of the one or two favorites, but they will be a solid squad as always. Uh, I want to mention also Pinewood Prep, year two for Coach Devontae Holloman there. Quarterback, safety, Alsa Wyndham is back, along with linebacker Connor White. I think they'll be a team to look out for. First Baptist, year two for Coach Birch. Tanner Swisher, have heard good things about him this summer. He's been a good player for them. 
And then Northside Christian, that's an interesting squad to me, a team that is, I think, newer to the Skeezer ranks, really made a, a pretty good run last year, uh, Northside Christian did there. Running back Sam Burke, linebacker Zachary Gebhard, really good players there for that squad. And then Florence Christian, they have to replace Mr. Everything, running back, receiver, DB, Jules Huntley. He moves on, but Coach Minton does a great job there. The Eagles, I'm sure, will be a contender this year. But three will be a lot of fun. Um, but I, I think, really, Pinewood Prep, Trinity Collegiate, Hilton Ed Christian, probably your three favorites there in the 3A. Yeah, I like Pinewood. I like Pinewood. And I, I don't know why I said, well, they were number two. I don't know. I just <laughs> – Overlooked them. Overlooked them. I'm Overlooked blanked. them. I blanked. <laughs> no worries. No worries. <laughs> Moving down to 2A now, John. Yeah, so the 2A poll for Skiza, number one is Bethesda Academy, two is Clarendon Hall, number three is St. John's Christian, four, Orangeburg Prep, and coming at five is PD Academy. Repeat that one more time, sorry, the, the whole poll. Number one is Bethesda. Yep. Number two is Clarendon Hall, three is St. John's Christian, four, Orangeburg Prep, and five is PD. I don't love this poll, I'll be honest with you. Um, you know, Bethesda – Defending state champs, also getting a new stadium. So, hey, you win a state title, cool. you get a new stadium. That's how it works these cool. days. So, so good to see that there for Bethesda. I think they're going to be a good team again for sure. But outside of that, I think it's Bethesda. I think it's Orangeburg Prep, and I think it's PD Academy. I think that's your three contenders there in the 2A ranks, in my opinion. You know, Orangeburg Prep, you're two for Don Shelley. He's won, I think it's 10 state titles in his career, maybe 11. Just wins everywhere he goes. He'll do a great job there. Hart Wiles leads that group up front, offensive and defensive line there. Tilden Riley, a tight end, is a really good weapon for them. Already has an offer from ECU. Uh, he's a good player out wide there for OP. PD Academy quarterback Colby Richardson, a baseball commit to Coastal Carolina, really good athlete there. Wide receiver Miles Trussell, running back Tristan Heckman, wide receiver Jameson Rogers are all playmakers for them. Offensive lines be really good. A lot of guys back, anchored by Hayden Spivey and Keaton uh, Keaton Cribb, excuse me. Ryan Small and Judson Martin, big players on defense for them outside of those guys we already mentioned as well. They'll be key contenders for them. Need a couple guys to step up on defense for sure, but Coach King's squad is going to be ready to roll, I'm sure, uh, for the Golden Eagles here in a couple weeks. But they're a team that I like a lot this season there in two-way. The other team, Drew, I did want to mention uh, Dylan Christian, year two for Coach Donnell Stanley. Yeah. Jackson Outler's back. Avery Sherman's back. 17 touchdowns for him last year. He's building something nice there for the Warriors. And then Thomas Sumter. They replaced seven seniors. Max Moreno, a solid player for those guys. Um, the Generals, I think, will, will be better than last year, but I still think it's really – PD Academy, Orangeburg Prep, but that's the Academy of your top three there in 2A, in my opinion. And, you know, what's big for 2A is you lose Williamsburg mm -hmm. Academy. Uh, they dropped down to 1A now, so uh, they went to play for the state championship this past year. Don't have to worry about them now in yeah. 2A this year. For sure. Drew, any comments or questions to get to before we look down at the, uh, the 1A ranks? Cam says, thoughts on First Baptist. I like year, First Baptist. Yeah, year two for Coach Birch. I like him a lot. We interviewed him last year when he got the job. Really sharp, really exciting young coach there. I like Tanner Swisher at quarterback. I think the Hurricanes have a much better season than last year. We'll put it that way. I think they, they're heading the right direction. That's all the skis of comments we have so far. Perfect. Let's look at the 1A ranks now, John. So, as uh, you may expect, Williamsburg Academy checks in at number one since they are dropping down from 2A to 1A this year. Number two is Patrick Henry. Three is Lee Academy. Four is Dorchester Academy. And five is Thomas Hayward. Last year's state chance, Patrick Henry, uh, I think they came in at second in that poll there. They lost a lot, man. They lose both the Ferry brothers, Hugh and Fer uh, Forrest, who kind of led that squad there. It'll be tough to replace them. Williamsburg. Tyler Boyd, second year as the head man, lost in that state title game to Bethesda in 2A last year. You mentioned dropping down now. They have to replace a lot of pieces. Teague Ward, Conrad, ba Conrad Balder, Camden Moore, all out. Michael my, uh, Micah Balder is back, though. He'll kind of anchor them up front. Expect a lot from uh, – excuse me. Uh, yeah. yeah, he's the quarterback. Sorry, Micah Balder. I, I think I had a missed ty uh, typo there. But, yeah, do have a couple pieces who have played some, played some, some serious ball for them. They'll be big time players, but I think Williamsburg is one of the favorites uh, for sure. Outside of those guys, you got to mention Carolina Academy new head coach David Rankin won a lot of football games. Robert Lee last couple of years uh, took them to state title game last year. He moves over to Carolina. Dorchester Academy has seen to look out for went nine and three under year one head coach Michael Nelson there. John Wetzel, John Quattlebaum are back. They're playmakers for those guys there. Lee Academy new head coach Will First coming from Lawrence Manning. You should see what he can do. You know, replacing Deshaun Haddon. You got a new QB as well coming in. That'll be a tough, uh, some tough shoes to fill, but they've got talent there for sure, it feels like. 
And I think Buford Academy is a team that has made a lot of noise the last couple years with Skiza. You know, you know, you lose your three thousand yards of offense last year. That's not easy to replace. Uh, but they are a team that has got a great coach with Coach Shuford. They know how to to win ball games and to game plan and whatnot. They're a contender. But I like Williamsburg a lot in the one A ranks. Yeah, and uh, I, I'm thinking Dorchester Academy. I'm I'm want to believe in them. Yeah, to make a big move yeah. this year. And you know, Michael two. Nelson won so many state titles at Holly Hill. He knows how to win. Had a big year in year one last year. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. I think they've got to have a good program. Yeah, very competitive for sure. Let's look down at the eight man ranks now, John, uh, and kind of go through that top five. Give our thoughts on that, and then we'll give some uh, some predictions for state titles and whatnot. Yeah, for eight man at number one, you've got Jefferson Davis. Two is Holly Hill Academy. Three is Richard Wynn. Fourth is Wardlaw. And fifth is Lawrence Academy. Familiar names at the top. You know, JDA, Colson Lodeholt, but he's back. He plays over the field. Nazir Void as well as a good player for them. Holly Hill, Ashton Souls is back. That's a big, big piece back there for the Raiders. Great to see him back in that uniform there. Uh, Richard Wynn, they lose a lot of talent. You know, you lose Drew Spires. That's a tough piece to replace there. Did a little bit of everything for those guys there. They will be back, I'm sure. I don't know some of those names yet for those guys, but they will be a contender when it comes down to it. Lawrence Academy, Quarterback Ethan Collins got some experience as a freshman last year. Murphy and Willie running the ball. Had a young group last year, really hopefully to take that next step there, led by Bell and Overton on defense. And then Warlaw, quarterback, athlete, Colton Bailey. He's a really good player for them. I like him a lot. They're a team to look out for, I think, in the 1A ranks. Yeah, and I, I just – I'm not going to go against Jefferson Davis. I, I don't know enough about eight men to say, hey, somebody is way better than they are. Yeah. Um, we still got to see that eight-man game. Yeah, we'll do it. We'll, we'll do it. We'll we'll get one of those. Drill, any comments or thoughts from you? Uh, Jason Sorry, I took a phone call. Miss Foray. Yeah, run through the rankings again. Yeah, read off those yeah, 4A yeah, yeah. rankings again right quick, uh, John. And so th this is not uh, an official poll. It's just one that we found um, just for fun. Yeah, one that we just saw online. Yeah. Not from us. Yeah. Not from us. So the top five for 4A is one Hammond, two Lawrence Manning, three Porter Gowd, four is Northwood Academy, and fifth is Cardinal Newman. Yeah, you mentioned Jason Lawrence, many losing a lot of players, no doubt. 24 plus seniors. That's a that's a huge number at a smaller school, you know, a skiza school. But love what Coach Briggs brings to the table there. I think they'll be back and they'll be a contender again um, in the skiza 4A ranks. Drill, any thoughts from you on this eight man through four A skiza season coming up here? You know I'm an authority on skis of football. Not at all. I'm just going to give you my championship Drill, come prediction. Out of, come out of the background, Drill. I don't like to see oh, your, your ghost on. voice over there. I, I, like, I, like, I like creeping in the shadows. Yeah, I'm just going to give you state title prediction or champion, state champion, 4A going LMA. I don't care if they lost everybody. I like that. Over Hammond? Here. Over Hammond. We're going to get the upset, picking them it. over Hammond. we got to put Drill back behind the screen again. I don't know. This I, is dude, <laughs> I, I, pick, I pick on vibes. 3A, we're going Pinewood Prep. Love that. Uh, 2A going Orangeburg. 1A, we're going Williamsburg. That's a that's an easier pick there. And then eight man going JDA. Those are my picks. I like it. Don't don't yeah. ask me. Except for my 4A pick. Everybody can pick Hammond. We got to have an upset eventually, right? Hey, it was close last year. Seven, a seven point ball game in the title game. Yeah. Close ball game last year. But you or me, John. Oh, wow. Zach taking shots at me. Look at this. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, oh no, Zach. <laughs> <laughs> uh, drill, Jason's but, drill but the, man. There you go. Hey, but, both sides of the coin drill. Both sides of the there coin. There we go. <laughs> uh, I, I, for me in four A, I, I like Hammond a lot. It's hard not to pick them, man. You know, you mentioned they they lost a, a good bit of talent up front, but still a lot of playmakers back. Manny Johnson, Mike Tyler, uh, you know, a Andrew Turner. I think Hammond. I think they win again, man. I think they make it eight in a row, which is which is pretty wild to yeah, say. I mean, with the talent level that they have, it, it's it's hard that they will. Hard to believe that they wouldn't. Um, you yeah. got to go Hammond there just for for me for the talent, the talent level that they have. Yeah, looking down at three, this one is really intriguing to me. Um, I don't know who my favorite is. You know, Pinewood I think has a good chance. Hill and Christian has a good chance. But I like Trinity Collegiate. I think them coming down to three A from four A. Uh, Coach Mel does a great job there. I have a son at quarterback there. We mentioned James Herbert and, and the offensive line being a strength for them. I think the Titans win this three A state title this year. I want to go. I, I like Jarrell's pick with Pinewood. I'm gonna go Pinewood too. I like it. Looking down at two A, John. I gave you three names that I liked. Uh, you know, Orangeburg Prep, Bethesda, PD Academy. Um, a little bit handcuffed here. I'm gonna go with the Golden Eagles. I think PD Academy wins this state title, makes it two out of three um, in, in different classes there. But I do think that uh, I do think the Golden Eagles win this uh, two A state title this year. I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with this is gonna be my boring pick. I'm gonna stick with Bethesda. 
um, to repeat. I like that. And then down in 1A, John, uh, who do you like in this class? It's got to be Williamsburg. I, I would love to see Dorchester Academy mm -hmm. um, make that make a run at it. But I think if you got to pick, you got to go Williamsburg. I think so, too. Um, I think Williamsburg, I do like Lee and Dorchester a lot. I just – I'm a little bit worried about a lot of pieces they're replacing there. I, I like the stallions. Like they make a deep run. Uh, but I think the team to watch out for, though, is Buford Academy. I mentioned replacing a ton of offense, I think 3,000 yards of offense to replace. But they'll have it figured out by the time the season uh, gets comes to a close, probably peaking at the right time there. But I do like Williamsburg there in 1A. And then an eight man. I, I, I think it's Jefferson Davis. I, I like Lodeholt a, a bunch. Um, I, I think they're the favorite. Obviously, last year we saw them and Holly Hill play for it, um, you know, of course. And I think there's a good chance we get back to that same matchup again. Um, but I do like JDA. I think they win the, win the eight-man championship. Yeah, I'm going to go with Jefferson Davis, too. I, I'm going to trust them. that Trust them. They've got the eight-man game figured out again. <laughs> Perfect. Drill, any comments or any thoughts from the chat we need to get to? Zach says, eight, 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 eight straight state titles. Any class is absurd. Uh, yeah, I agree. I 100% agree. It's crazy what they've done there. Um, the Skyhawks have at Hammond. And I just want to thank Allison for the support. You know, Drew, one of the one of our favorite players we've got to cover. You know, wish him the best as he goes on to to bigger and better things. For sure, for sure, he'll be in the Citadel playing some ball. So we'll have to keep up them on Very Saturdays cool. for sure. Anything else from the uh, chat, from the comments? We need to circle back on from other classes or anything like that. John uh, and Drell. Really says, guys, it amazes me how y'all keep with all these schools. <laughs> It amazes me some too, sometimes too, man. You just I just pulled things out of the steel trap that I didn't know were in there, uh, which is great to have. Appreciate you, Bradley. Looking forward to having you in here for our 3A, 4A, 4A, 5A preview later on this week. Um, mentioned it, John. We talked about Skiza. Talked about 1A. Talked about 2A tonight. If you guys tuned in late, it's still going to be here on our uh, social pages later on. So definitely do that. Drill. let's do one more shout-out to our friends of the program before we wrap up here and get out of here for the night. Carolina Orthopedic and Neurosurgical Associates, Kona, offers the most advanced training and experience in orthopedic surgery, neurosurgery, sports medicine, and pain management in the upstate. Three convenient locations in Spartanburg, Duncan, and Greenville. Go to Kona.care to learn more. At HTC, we're here to keep you connected. Here to provide reliable fiber optic internet with free, fast, and secure HTC smart Wi-Fi. HTC, here to connect. John, this has been a, a lot of fun tonight uh, talking through some of these lower classes here. You know, football is right around the corner. I guess it's probably, what, 11 days away. The 23rd is week zero. So we're right around the corner. Got jamborees this week. Got yeah. scrimmages this week, man. So if you guys, if you want to go see some football, I'm sure there's a great game, a great matchup somewhere around your area this Friday night. But, you know, we'll be back later on this week. Not sure the night yet. Could be tomorrow. Not exactly sure about our 4A, 5A, 3A preview. We'll definitely post it on Facebook and social media so you guys will know when that goes live. So you can check it out. I ask you guys this every week, please, please, please share the video, like it, subscribe, tell your friends. We're trying to grow this thing. Um, and, you know, John, we say it every year, every week. I feel like it's a lot more fun when there's more folks in here who are giving us comments, giving us their thoughts. I love reading that from you guys. You know, we, we see X number of teams per year. We don't get to see everybody. We, we really don't. And you guys do. So it, it's great to hear from you guys about your favorite squad. Love to talk about that. So definitely get your friends in here. Get your family in here. Get your community in here. Share it. Like us on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, everywhere. We've got a lot of great videos coming out, more season preview stuff. we got our Food Review Fridays coming back from the concession stands. Those are a lot of fun to watch every week. Um, got some more player interviews coming out. So a lot of really good graphics, a lot of really good content coming your way as the season gets rolling. Uh, Drew, any final thoughts from you or any thoughts, final thoughts, thoughts from you here, John, before we uh, pop out here for the night? I wish it wasn't so far away. <laughs> Uh, it's like riding a bike. You guys uh, killed it. You know, first uh, first show back, you know, no rust whatsoever. Um, you know, I've been told today that I need to stay in the shadows because I don't pick the right teams. And that's been a lot of fun. I hope Daydream gets to listen to this. You know, we we have burned bridges in, in Clinton tonight and Louisville. You know, we did. Well, we did Louisville. Not a, I like not Louisville. A, not as high on the lines as we were, were last year. Yeah. So, you know, uh, we, we I had him. I had him right there in the upper state. Had them right there, right the there state, but you you, you didn't uh, have them all the way there. So uh, we'll see what happens. That's why I like doing this, and uh, hey, I love it. We get to start playing games. We get to play it out on the for field. Us too. It's preseason for us too. You know, we can make mistakes. It's okay, Drew. <laughs> we got a long season to go. We got I a long it. season to go, man, for sure. But like I mentioned, check us out 
all social media platforms, Movement Chains, M-O-V-I-N-C-H-A-I-N-S, website movementchains.com, podcast, Apple, Spotify, Google, and more. Check us out wherever you get your podcast. We'll be on there as well. So appreciate you guys as always. As always, get your merch, get, get your hats, get your get your uh, toboggans, get your hoodies, support us, support the boys. Love to have you guys in here. It's a great crowd tonight. I'm sure we'll have a bigger crowd for the, the bigger classes here in, in a couple nights, but appreciate you guys as always. For uh, for Jarrell Hendricks, for John Epps, I'm Kevin Thomas. This has been our 2A, 1A, and Skeezit season preview show, and we'll talk to you guys soon.